Hi, this is Maji Noni, and here's my reviews for uh, Unc Uncanny X-Men 535 and X-Men Legacy 247, uh, Age of X Chapter 5. Uh, as you can tell, I'm very enthusiastic about these reviews. Uh, I don't know, it's something about this entire X-Universe that just isn't exciting to me anymore. Uh, Second Coming was amazing. It really captivated me, made me want to read the next issue, and like for an example, if either of these two issues were canceled tomorrow, I, I just, I went to sleep over it. Now, I will say Age of X is actually turning out to being something a little bit better than I thought it was, but I still think inherently it's still a story that's been done before, and it's just, oh, once I found the whole angle of the story, it just kind of was like, really? That's the best you could have done? I mean, you, you gave me interesting characters, you gave me some interesting ideas, you took it into some really unusual places, and then you're just going to kind of retcon it all the way back. Now, basically what's going on here is... Key X-Men are figuring out the world isn't what it's supposed to be. Uh, for an example, you have Rogue, uh, Kitty Pride, uh, Professor X, Gambit to some degree. Um, now you have um, Basilisk or Cyclops is going, hey, something's not right. And they, what's, what they've noticed is basically it's a repeating cycle, meaning every day at the same time there's an attack. Um, nothing changes. And if a couple issues back, Basilisk made a comment about the, the the name tags, dog tags, you know, being the same. And you know, he sensed that there was something going, something funny going on. Now, this is about the time here where revelations are made and whatnot. And uh, this is gonna be a little bit of a spoiler for you, but basically, what's going on is uh, Legion. All of this is basically. Legion basically created another alternate world where all of this is taking place, and um, it's basically everything's on a repeating cycle. Uh, while you know it appears to them months, years have gone by, type thing, um, it's only a few short days have actually gone by, and um, I'm not. Like I said, I've just I don't know. I guess you can say that. I would rather have had this be an alternate universe story and just be that, an alternate universe Age of X title that just gave us new characters, new ideas, and then just said, here's your world, go play in it, and you know maybe they can revisit the world time to time. You know, I think I would have appreciated that a little bit more than, oh, it's Legion, uh, and he's up to shenanigans. Uh, it, I don't know. It, to me now, I, I guess I guess what you can say is, for me, the story is pointless. Um, you know, I don't know. I might, I don't know. It just like I said, just pointless. It just seems to me that for five issues, I, I could have actually done um, better reading X Men versus the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants for five issues type thing, because um, it doesn't really advance the characters. It doesn't really advance the plot line. It doesn't really do anything other than give us this alternate world and takes it all away. Um, I'm, which is a shame. It, it really is a shame because I was, you know, as I was re starting to read this more, I was really hoping that this would have been actually turning out to be good, and it was. It was actually, you know, as I was reading deeper into the story, I was getting more and more interested in it. And once the reveal started to happen, that's when I, I my interest level just dropped significantly. So that's my review of that. Uh, now, in Kenny X Men number 535, uh, could somebody please just tell me why Kitty Pride has a fishbowl on her head? I don't get it. I really don't understand it. Uh, I, I, you know, I actually wasted five minutes thinking about this, and I thought, well, okay, she's got unstable molecules that, you know, she, she goes through anything she touches. So maybe this suit is a containment suit, maybe, and the fishbowl is. Obviously, to keep her, 
you know, atoms from escaping. Now, this is the problem I have with this this right now. If you, I know you newer readers will not know of this, but a long time ago when Kitty Pride first appeared under the Burn Claremont years, Kitty Pride had a problem in that she can phase, but she had to hold her breath while she phased. And, um, you know, like for an example, I actually I should need to reword this a little better. You know, if let's say for an example she was phasing through rock or lava or something to that effect, she had to hold her breath because obviously she wasn't going to be able to breathe. And that was an issue. So, with this fishbowl head, where's the oxygen coming in? I don't see something that's generating oxygen unless it's Reed Richards and stable molecule thing that c creates oxygen for her. I don't know. Now, now there's that idea which quickly goes away because, as you can see, there's this useless attack here, and obviously just another attempt just to throw Namor in there, and um, they throw Kitty Pride through this, and it looks like. See, this is the thing that this is the thing that makes me wonder: Do they really know what they're doing? Because, okay, imagine this: Kitty Pride goes through anything. That means she goes through walls. She can go through um, uh, buildings, um, doors, whatever, right? So, Colossus throws Kitty into this robot thing, and as you can see, it caused damage. Now, I understand when Kitty phases through things, it causes electrical things to go crazy. But when you look at this thing here, what it looks like basically he attacked the robot with his her suit, is what it looks like. Because you can see this impact here, which is basically the fishbowl and her costume. He, 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 threw, he threw her so hard it knocked away her costume. Because underneath it, you can see her old costume is still there. And as you can see here, she's not gasping for air or, you know, any a little any bit concerned. There's no concern that she doesn't have this suit on. You know, you would think that if maybe her molecules were leaving, if she couldn't breathe, or there was something to that effect going on, they wouldn't be thinking about holding hands. They'd be like, OMG, we need to get her back into safety because considering how long it's going to take them to get to... Um, the lab to get her a new suit. Anyways, um, and as you can see, she still doesn't have the suit on. Still, so it's why is it? Why does she have a fishbowl head? I don't get it. It makes no sense to me. So we get that part here, and then now we get the sword storyline where they're like, "We need your heavy hitters because of um, oh, what that stupid thing, Break World or whatever it's called," and. Um, so they're bringing back all that nonsense. And, you know, Magneto's like, we need to get that rocket that I sent to another location because it has a strange metal. And I'm like, why? Just why? Just let it go, you know? Just let it go. And anyway, I, I don't know. I'm just not, I don't care. I don't, I don't care about all of this, this nonsense here. I just don't care. I don't care about sword. I don't care about those those aliens I don't care about um, the rocket any longer uh, I don't it just doesn't interest me and now we're gonna get stuck with a few issues of this which obviously is gonna be a swerve because they're basically wanting a silent type thing you know please go oh, great mighty Colossus Lord of Master uh, we need to live in your planet uh, please help and I'm like it's a swerve obviously so I don't know. I'm not. I'm not pleased. I guess you can say. Um, but the, the, I'm a little bit disappointed. But you know, the thing you have to understand is when you live um, the life of an X-Men fan, you're used to disappointment, and um, so it's nothing new. So, anyways, uh, rate the video up or down. Let me know what you think. Um, I'll have more videos up. Subscribe to the channel. And um, until next time.